Snipers and random gunfire from guarded towers reflect the Israeli policy of extermination throughout the Palestinian lands. And all that the people can do is be patient. As for the children, it's a life full of fear and an early death. The children are mirrors of their real life. Their toys speak for their reality. But children here have no toys. They play with the tools of death. They make their toys out of the remains of rockets falling on their heads, out of the empty bullets of machine guns. They dig in the ground and hide these toys of theirs. Their houses are no longer safe places for them or for their toys. Deprivation is surrounding these children, leaving no room for them to be optimistic. Although death is haunting the place, they have the will to survive. They stretch their hands to pick the fruits of their childhood, but poverty and deprivation hold them back. Fathers are looking for bread for their hungry children under siege, but things go from bad to worse, and no one can bring these children a bit of happiness. These youngsters have forgotten about their childhood. Their only concern is to earn a living for their younger brothers and sisters who are deprived of their breadwinners. Some were killed and others are in jail. The long working hours are too tiring for them. And at the end of the day, they may not find anyone who has but a few shekels to buy from them. All is under siege. Not too far from here, on the same land and at the same moment, you find other children who have everything. They are enjoying their childhood. Their dreams and wishes are realized at no effort. The Zionist children have too much, and the children of Palestine have too little. How huge the difference. The Israelis are tightening the noose around the neck of the Palestinians with siege and fire. They impose curfews. They confine the hungry mouths to their empty houses. They force children to experience home arrest. They give free hand to settlers to kill and to devastate properties. The Israeli forces watch all these acts. They intervene only to support the settlers against the people of Palestine. When they see us playing or gathering in any place, the settlers assault us. Anyone who falls in their hands will be doomed. If they see us playing football, they take the ball and stab it flat. They break windows, destroy shops and everything in their way. The army is leaving us no opportunity to go out and play. The soldiers are surrounding us from all sides. They leave us no room for playing or anything else. The Israeli children are not satisfied with the luxuries they have. 
They don't leave the Palestinian children alone. They attempt to deprive these kids from their play field, their only outlet to joy. When they see us playing, the second day the settlers come and assault us. They push us aside and begin to play in the same place just to tease us. Our children do not give in to the Israeli Jewish occupiers. They don't let them have their play fields. They resist until they have the final say. They were able to keep what remained of their playgrounds. Would our nation see a new dawn at the hands of these children? We don't like to quarrel with them. It's them who come and encroach upon our properties. We cannot sit aside and let them destroy our houses and shops. We don't let them encroach on us. We cannot allow them to occupy anything. We'll defend our land and our homes. We don't have weapons, but we fight them with stones. We do everything to keep them out of our land. They are ruthless. When we go out to defend our rights and demonstrate at checkpoints, they shoot at us. They want us to stay confined to our homes as prisoners and to remain motionless. They want us to behave the way they like. We want them to give us freedom, which all people in the world enjoy. أبحث عن صوت يجدوني ألحانا من غير دموع من غير دموع أبحث لكن حار فؤادي فأنا زهر دون ربيع أبحث عن صبح الحرية يعبر يخترق القطب عن حل لقضيه